The following audio may contain the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team. Welcome everybody to tonight's Habits of Health call. Uh, I wanna wait a little bit for the chat to start filling up and it's filling up pretty quick so we can get started right away. Uh, really excited to be here. Um, really, uh, it's been a, uh, honor to be asked to do this tonight and uh, really because there's a is, I'm really passionate about the subject tonight because uh, you know as we enter in so we'll give it a little bit for it to populate and we'll get going if you want to you know uh, tell us where you're from in the chat how you're excited and how you're enjoying these habits of health calls uh, you just love to hear your comments and everything we're gonna be uh, uh, just kind of you know, talking back and forth and you use the chat, I'll use my voice and we have a couple of great guests on tonight as well to uh, add to tonight's uh, offering. And uh, so we'll get started here when we hit close to 1500 or so. So we get everything in. Wow, look how fast that chat's going. That's pretty awesome. Love watching that. Okay, we're hitting 1500. They're still coming in, rolling in, but we'll get started. Uh, you know, we talked about uh, last week, we had Charlene on element four talking about building a healthy mindset. And uh, tonight we're on element five. I really love this element, which is building a, an op and optimizing your surroundings, taking that healthy mindset and, uh, you know, figuring out who is in your, who's in your culture, who's on your team, who's getting excited about what you're doing and uh, finding those things and being, developing your community and your micro environment of health. And uh, I wanted to start off because my story kind of started here. I really didn't have come to Optavia for um, weight loss. I came for a healthy mind because uh, my life had left me uh, feeling a little bit uh, unfulfilled uh, for one thing. Uh, I did have a strong desire and a high value to uh, really um, uh, provide for my family. But that left me in a, in a predicament after years and it wasn't getting any better, it was actually getting worse that uh, I, wasn't, I was unfulfilled, I wasn't happy, I, was, I literally felt like I was swimming around in toxic waste. Uh, and I didn't work for a nuclear plant or anything, I would just work for this company. And uh, what I found was a lot of uh, negative energy that was around that. The toxicity that I talked about is, was the, uh, the environment that I worked in, uh, it was the, uh, the, some of the people, some of the relationships, just my thoughts started getting more toxic. And I become very aware of that. And then um, the waste part was I felt like in that kind of environment, I was wasting my time, my energy. I was really wasting my life. So I was really kind of got into a, uh, into a looking for something that could fulfill me and something of meaning and purpose. And uh, I really found it with uh, Optavia. And uh, that was really one of the turning points of my life and one of the major turning points and the best, one of the best things that's ever happened to me. So... How I did that, we basically were looking for like-minded people and we surrounded ourselves. There were people already involved and on that journey, we had this basically this beautiful place to go and grow. And so basically uh, what helped me do that was, uh, you know, uh, we'll go to, oh, we'll try to go to share here. Where's my share? Oh, no. Okay, we'll bring this up. Can you see this? Not yet. Hey, for those of you that have just arrived into the webinar, we'd love to see in the chat feature what Optavia has meant for you. If you had an experience with Optavia and the Habits of Health program, put in the chat what's been your biggest takeaway from the program, whether it's been weight loss, whether it's been um, healthy lifestyle, anything that you've seen as an experience to your health and improvement. We'd love to see it in the chat for those people that are just checking this out for the first time, or maybe they're brand new to Optavia. 
Okay, so we're good now. Lost my share button there for a second. Okay, so getting back to it, thanks, thanks Dave for uh, stepping in there. We we're having some technical difficulties. And uh, so anyway, uh, what, what we found was the Habits of Health transformational system and the, the community and culture. And one of the things that was really beautiful about this is basically you kind of, when you kind of leave things in the past and you're really in a, in a uh, mindset of really creating something for yourself, you have to discard a few things and you have to bring a few things on. And this Habits of Health system was critical part of that happening uh, for myself and for many others as well. And we've been, uh, want to kind of speak to this because we want to hit this hard. If you haven't got a, uh, a Habits of Health system, I highly encourage you because it's been advanced and it's been restructured and it's been improved. And we've had some things that have been added to it which is basically the habits of health is the educational piece. Then we have the uh, app, which is the accountability piece and your daily reminders. And the life book is the elements and we're going through them right now. And that's one of the most exciting things that I love because when you make it personal about your life and your journaling, you're really starting to understand what it takes to create that environment and, and create health and really create anything in your life. Once you go through this process, whatever you're successful at, uh, if your weight loss journey is the first thing you're going after, once you understand how to do that correctly, you can apply this in any aspect of your life. So it's really awesome. And then we have the Habits uh, Health website, which is full of information valuable to each and every individual. So in this element five, we're going to look at this, your surroundings and see how we can recruit people. We can modify the places and change the things that touch our world. And that's a really powerful thing, uh, discovering how to create a microenvironment of healthy relationships. Relationships are key. If we can get that uh, straightened out, everything will fall into place. And we can provide you with the tools, resources, and tips that will help you improve your relationships. And uh, last of all, we'll examine the value of community and surrounding yourself with like-minded people. And that's key as well, because you know, if we're off on, uh, if we're not with like-minded people, uh, we're probably with the wrong people. And so I love this quote uh, Dr. Anderson has in the book. Your goal is to create a microenvironment of health, a protective bubble to shield you against obesogenic forces, not just obesogenic, but even any negative forces, and nurture your growth and transformation. It's really key to your success, and, uh, and it's, a, it's a beautiful thing when we can do that. So, uh, you know, Optavia really provides a fertile soil for you to plant your seed of transformation in, and uh, it will support you through that whole process. And how we do that often, one of the things we do is we stay above the line. It's one of our hot six. Uh, we stay above the line when everything we do, because in, when you're above the line, you're open, you're curious, and you have a growth mindset. When you're below the line, it's really uh, one of those things where you're closed off, you're not open, you don't know what you don't know, but you really don't want to know type of thing. And, uh, and really, uh, I like to put it as, and when you're in above the line, you're powerful. And when you're below the line, you're powerless. Because the things that you say, uh, which are like blame, jam, uh, blame, shame, and justification are some of the things you'll do below the line. And that's actually giving your power over to somebody else. Somebody else controls your outcome. And when you're above the line, you're taking responsibility, and that's a good place to be because when you take 100% responsibility, it all falls on you, and you make those choices. So uh, give a one in the chat if you love that one because uh, staying above the line is key uh, to having a positive attitude and a positive outcome in your life. And one of the things that takes us below the line is uh, when Dr. A talks about in the book is a hot or go system or a cool or no system. Well, hot is basically your emotional response, your reactive thing. And I think that most people operate on this level that uh, they don't think about. They react to it. They're emotionally driven. And then they wonder why their life is messed up and full of drama. And uh, what Dr. A is asking you to do is take a sip of water. Uh, take a drink before you think. Or if you need to take a time to think and, and make a good choice, I like to uh, uh, think that, um, this is your uh, emotional mismanagement defense system is the cool or no is that you're pay playing a mini chess game inside your head. Anytime somebody is uh, activating that hot button and usually we have that hot button for a multitude of reasons. It's, it was actually programmed into us uh, 
by lifestyle and, and modeling. Uh, but usually it's stress activated and we all have a lot of stress in our lives and really uh, wouldn't you like to be surrounded by people who are on this level of creating uh, a healthy reaction to life, to limit stress, to stop challenge and choose and move towards uh, a healthier and better outcome in every one of their relationships and just asking yourself to check yourself before you wreck yourself. And I like this one because really it is uh, another way and you know, it's a fun way to say stop, challenge and choose before you act out and, and, and do something that you'll be regretting a little bit later is uh, you know, really checking into when you feel that feeling of emotion, stopping for a second, challenging whether that person or that, you know, that situation will be improved by your next response, what's about to come out of your mouth, or it will be less than because of that response. And once you basically, a relationship is like a fine vase. If you, if you crack it, the integrity is gone forever. And it's really hard, you can't repair it. You can glue it back together, but it will never be the same. So it's really important that we uh, get this one under control. So really check yourself before you wreck yourself is one of those things. So. Uh, that we really want to get really good at and uh, stop challenge and choose is a big part of that. One of the other things is, and I love these four questions because this takes you out of drama. When you're having those emotional responses, when you're about ready to react to something or things aren't going the way you want them to, just stop and ask yourself these questions. What is happening here? Do you like it or don't you like it? What did I want to have happen here? And then, what was missing that I could have done or shouldn't have done to make for a better outcome. And either you can work to improve that situation immediately, or you'll know better what to do next time. So moving forward and what's next. So these four uh, questions are very valuable and all these things I like to use as, as I see them play out here above the line, below the line, the four important questions. Uh, we'll talk about a few other things, but they're like little programs you put inside your brain. And uh, I don't know who else thinks like that. I don't know if, I, if I'm the only one or not. I, I put a one in the chat if you think like that. You like these little programs. So when you find yourself in an emotional situation or a situation that that pops into your head and you go through that process and you have a better outcome and you like that and you want more of that and you do more of that. And then pretty soon you're going to be attracting uh, not only improving and becoming that person you want to become, but you're attracting those people as well people will notice the difference in you and how you respond to the world and how they're responding and they want more of it. And then you can add them to your, your, your community, to your, the people that surround you. And that's a good thing. And that just supports your overall outcome. So uh, we want to improve our relationships, but you know, so one of the things we want to do is find out who's in your amen corner, who, who's champion, who's clapping for you when you're winning. And, uh, and then there's also who is, uh, who's your accomplices? Who are your saboteurs that, that uh, kind of, who's that crab in the pot that's pulling you back into that boiling water because they don't want to see you because they're not ready to do anything about it. They don't want to see you winning either. And, and then uh, we'll talk about um, maybe reading the book Necessary Endings, which is really not an ending to a relationship, but really a renegotiation. So you talk about, does this person support my healthy outcome? What do I want to create? The life I want to lead? Do they fit into the environment that I want to create for myself? And, uh, and they have, you can renegotiate on how they can stay in or renegotiate how much time you spend with them and, and under what circumstances to protect yourself and your environment. So having like-minded people around you is very powerful and it's a huge motivator uh, to keep you going. And in this one, four stages of learning, you know, most of us, uh, you know, how many of you feel like you're an uh, unconscious incompetent when it comes to building your micro environment of health? We'll use that as an example today. Well, we're becoming conscious right now by talking about it and why it's so important. So we're going from unconscious to conscious. Uh, and then, uh, okay, I'm a conscious incompetent. Now I know I'm not good at this. What do I do now? Well, it's working with your support team. Reading, reading books and getting the, the support you need from uh, your coaches and your support team and, uh, you know, and then your self-help stuff you can do on your own. But uh, then we can come move into conscious competent where we have to think about 
all the time, stop challenging and choosing and stopping ourselves and feeling those emotions and doing the steps. And we have to be really mindful about it at first. But at, over time, when with practice, we can become unconscious competence, which is, means it's a natural reaction now. We've been, done it for so long and done it so well for so long that uh, we now can do it without even thinking about it. And that's what we're going to go to. Don't expect to do that overnight because <laughs> it won't happen. It's something of mastery that usually takes 10,000 hours to get really good at it. But, you know, it, on your journey, you will improve the person you, who you are and the person you're attracting because your microenvironment health is getting so untoxified. We'll use that. I don't think that's even a word, but you're taking the toxicity out of your life and people are going to be really attracted to that that pureness of your, of your, and, and, and the love and everything that you have in that environment that you want to create because it's your environment. You get to create what you want. And if, if, and the result is people are going to be attracted to it and they'll love it. So just think about some of those things that also what pulls you away from it, those things that uh, pull you off, throw you off of that. What pulls you back into the pot? What, what takes you off your game? Um, what draws you back into the drama triangle? Those are things that we have to be aware of until we reach mastery, that uh, as you're out and about and you feel a situation arising, you fall falling into old habits and you, you're not liking the way you're showing up. What are those things? What triggers it? Was it stress? Maybe we need to work on less stress in our lives. So, uh, and, and how to create a better situation moving forward. Like, is going to the airport stressful for you? Well, how about leaving an hour early, getting a, um, a lounge pass or something at your local air flight and hanging out and just working and casually go to your flight where you don't have to worry about getting through security or traffic. You're, you're, you're eliminating that stress and you will show up better because of it. And uh, those are just little things that we can do to improve that situation. So I'm going to kind of end here for a little bit. I want to go off on to speaker view and I want to bring on uh, a friend of mine, Rhonda Lorenzen, who's going to share. I shared kind of with my healthy mind uh, and my surroundings and what, what uh, came available to do that, what I had to do. And Rhonda is going to share about her uh, healthy body, healthy environment that she created for herself and why that was important. Rhonda. Thank you so much, David, and thank you for this invitation. Really, really nice to be here. You know, um, everybody, I'm 51 years old, and for three decades of my life, I struggled with obesity. Um, I had a negative internal dialogue that played that told me that I'd lost and gained weight before, and it would probably happen again. I never got myself to a healthy weight, and I just allowed this, this negativity to kind of play in my mind. Um, when I found this program, I didn't know that it was going to be any different. And after about a week on program, I discovered that it was really something quite different. I decided to remove some key triggers from my household, like uh, um, any of the foods that would trip me up. I only brought in single serve um, portions of nuts that I could have as a snack. I didn't bring in a whole bag. I couldn't trust myself. At work, I removed the candy dish from the table um, and I made myself um, have a, self, a, a safer environment around me. Um, at social events, I decided that I would be the person, instead of researching and bringing the most decadent dessert possible, I would bring the biggest, most gorgeous salad possible with all the healthy toppings that I could have. And at work, I decided that I would use the stop, challenge, choose technique every time I was walking to the break room, anticipating that there was going to be something in there because inevitably there always was. And having that tool in my pocket helped me protect myself. After one week on program, I had such amazing results. I recognized that this was different and I had a solution. And I knew a lot of people who were like me who were stuck. And when you find something that changes things for you, you have to tell them. And I began helping other people. My husband was one of those people that I helped. And I began to, when David talked about this protective bubble, this, this group that you surround yourself with. My husband got healthy. He helped his son, our bonus, my bonus son, Trey, lose half his body weight and gain a whole new life. Um, my mother-in-law, friends and family, and all of a sudden we had this community around us who's behaving like us. There's so much purpose that I recognized where before I was bored and would spend my evenings watching reality TV and having mindless snacks. Now I had purpose from helping other people and helping other people was helping me. 
Um, in the end, uh, I've lost 110 pounds, but really what I've gained is an entirely new life. I'm confident, I'm happy, and most of all, I don't have any concern that I'll ever regain this weight again because it's not about the weight. It's about the life I have now, and I have everything that I need to keep me right where I'm at, and so do you. You've got tools. You've got this life book. Oh my gosh, what a treasure. And Dr. Ace Habits, a health system. You've got a coach, the same thing as I have. And with habit change and community and accountability that I have from helping other people, I know that now this is a lifestyle. I never knew there was such a thing as a lifestyle. I thought a lifestyle was just something that lucky people got. And uh, I am so grateful for Dr. A, for everybody in Optavia, this opportunity to share tonight. I wanted to leave you with an inspirational quote, but the thing that popped out to me just made me laugh, and that's this. It's okay to be a glow stick. Sometimes we have to break before we shine. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Uh, that was a perfect analogy of what it takes to create that, that micro habit and what can happen from that. I have seen, uh, you know, looking at the chats and stuff and, and people, there's little things just, you know, as I look at them, it's so remedial, but so big for such a huge leap for these people to understand that they have the control over these things and, uh, and how they respond to it. And, and I, my hope for everybody on this, on this uh, call tonight, on this Zoom, is that you take one of these things that you wrote down in the chat that really trip, trips you up and you utilize your support team, you, you utilize the community and the information in, in, the, in the life books and everything else. I mean, it's so powerful. All you need is one win to break the code. One win. So pick out that one thing that triggers you in this area and go to work on it. Work for a better result. It can get highly contagious. So I'm going to end right there and, and bring on our next guest because he's, I know he, we've had a lot of discussions about this next subject and I love the, the, to the transformation he's made for himself and how he's done that, which is around the healthy finances part. And so uh, Harold, uh, why don't you come on and share with people your story? What's up, David and Rhonda. Thank you for sharing. I love that story. Um, mine's, you know, I think all of ours is pretty similar if we follow the, the habits of health system that just affects us differently in certain areas of our life. And as David alluded to, you know, mine was finances. And uh, David and I have had uh, many of conversations uh, around this subject as he patiently uh, offered advice and, and helped me work through this. Um, and also, you know, you know, work through outside sources as well and, and dove into the mentorship of Optavia and just trusted the process. But I think it really, you know, David, it got to the point to where I was to that point to where two in the morning Tom was showing up way too much. And those of you who don't know who two in the morning Tom is, it's top of mind. And it's what would wake me up at two in the morning, it seemed to be, right before I had to get up to start my day with just that anxiousness, that anxiety that crunching numbers. How was I going to do this? How was I going to achieve that? How was I not going to tell this person no? And it just really was debilitating in my thoughts and my actions. It had me really acting in a sense of urgency too, because I was always chasing a number. I was always chasing. I'd always set this arbitrary number that represented security, but it was like that number always continued to move. Every time I'd get close to catching it, it would move because of some unforeseen circumstance would happen, something would break, something, you know, something unforeseen. And I realized that a lot of the way that I was thinking to what David alluded to earlier, not to blame, but it was a lot due to my conditioning from outside influences, you know, via the radio, via the television shows, mother, father, teacher, preacher, all of that, you know, was, was, instilling some stinking thinking, if you will, into my mind. And it was creating just a mindset of scarcity. So I did at the time start to limit my association with certain people. I just had to, while I was building a mindset of abundance, I had to build that armor of abundance. 
And in the meantime, I had to limit those associations. And I, you know, I'll be honest, as I began to reintroduce some of those relationships, some of them lasted and some of them didn't. Um, but, you know, I'm okay with that. And I'm, I'm very grateful for where we are and, and who, who I've developed to become. And it, again, it all started with trust in that process and that mentorship um, becoming, but I think the biggest paradigm shift for me was becoming content for where we were. Because we were always, always looking to the future for some sort of false fulfillment. That was that security. That was that arbitrary little number we kept setting that would represent security. And it was just false. So I told Sam, and I can remember about three years ago saying, Sam, when we become content for where we are on a Friday night, eating a ham sandwich and having our love and our health, everything will come to us. We'll be trusted with more. Right, because we will stop to act out of urgency. Because what you, how you act, is what you'll attract. So when we acted out of scarcity, trying to hold on and not losing what we had and never gaining what we wanted, so we began to act out of abundance, and we began to attract abundance. And it's an amazing thing whenever you fix this, this mind right here, and you begin to play above the line, and you begin to to put into action all of what Element Five talks about. And I'll end with this, and it's pretty amazing. I actually uh, messaged Terry a few days ago about this because we kind of play about my healthy finance evolve, evolution. And um, I had something break. It was a water pump. We went without water for three days just recently. And in the past, just to offer some contrast, that would have been a catastrophic event. It would have really set me back mentally, potentially physically. But this time... This time, it was just an inconvenience. It was a life situation that I dealt with, and I moved on. That's all I got, David. Well, that was beautiful because uh, that was super powerful because what you're setting an example of is, is you're, you're starting to master that thing that eluded you before, and it only became because you uh, opened yourself up to mentorship, and one of the things I've always said and since I was a little kid, somebody told me, and I can't even remember who it was. I wish I could give them credit, but they said, don't take advice from somebody you wouldn't trade places with. And, uh, and that's what we do is basically if we, somebody has something that we want, I want to know how they achieved it. Uh, and uh, it's not just, you know, there's a lot of ways to create wealth and stuff and not do it well, but there's also a lot of ways you can do it well. How to manage your money is one of those things that you want to, uh, when somebody comes from abundance, not greed or protecting what they have and just accumulating it is not a, somebody want to trade places with, but somebody that lives in abundance and is free to share what they have and, and teaches other people how to do it. We have this great thing called Apavia that we can just, we can not only help them with their finances, we can help them create it which is a beautiful thing. And so this, that's the beautiful thing about what we have to share. So I do wanna go back to a couple of these slides here um, and uh, double click on that and uh, move into this and ask ourselves a couple of questions here before we leave, uh, which is what does this element mean to you right now? You guys getting used to this theme? Uh, what does this element give you the opportunity to reflect on and what actions are you going to take as a result of this element? So basically, you know, if you want, start loading up the chat with a few things that you're going to think about, because really we can walk away this with a feel good experience, or we can utilize this thing to do some journaling, to focus on that one thing we want to work on and make a big difference in our lives and start making a big difference in other people's life, because you will be the person other people want to trade places with. And that would be a beautiful thing. And I think anybody that's attracted to off via would like that. We also have your life book elements. If you want to relive some of these uh, on Facebook, uh, one, two, and three, I, I think are on there already. Uh, but we also have these elements that Dr. A has done. And uh, you can go through there get, and send these to people who you think they can benefit from. And, uh, and I hope you guys join us next week because we have element six coming your way. And if, uh, if, they're any as good as, if they're as good as a lot of these ones we've had in the past, uh, you're going to love this. So anyway, uh, thank you for coming on, enjoying the Habits of Health call tonight, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye, everybody. 
This audio may have contained the personal testimonials of some Optavia coaches or clients of Optavia. The results relayed in these messages are based on the unique experiences of the participants and we cannot guarantee like or similar outcomes. While you may be inspired by these accounts, please note that any stories of success have not been verified and your individual path to optimal health will vary. As always, it is our recommendation that you consult with a healthcare provider before starting a weight loss program. Yours in health, the Optavia team.